Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Bant Party. What is going on, guys? And yes, I know, before we jump into the Bant Party list, I am very aware that almost all of these cards are going to be rotating out extraordinarily soon, but... I played this deck quite a long time ago, and when I did, I actually really enjoyed it. But here's the thing, I kind of don't like the party mechanic. In general, I have found that it's not very good, it's very unreliable, and you know, what have you. However, in creating this deck list, when I ran with it months and months ago, uh, I actually did okay. And so I kind of wanted to revisit it just with the idea of giving it one last hurrah and seeing how it goes, because I do think it's a really fun list. We've reworked it just slightly, uh, and we'll kind of talk about that as we go through, but obviously it's all built upon the party uh, mechanic, which if you don't know what that is, basically uh, to get a full party of creatures, you need to have a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, and a wizard on the field all at the same time. Now that's not easy to do, which is part of the huge downfall with the party mechanic is that it's not super reliable, if that makes sense, uh, because you do have to get so many creatures onto the field and that's not always easy to do, especially with a lot of the control decks running around in today's environment. So uh, I understand that that's what we're up against, but we're going to try it regardless. Now, as far as the creature package goes, because that's obviously going to be the majority of what we have in this deck, we have Archpriest of Iona, one of the best one drops for the deck. It is a cleric, so it counts towards the party mechanic. And if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until the end of the turn, which just means that you're going to be able to proactively deal a lot more damage than you normally would. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant is also here as a cleric. Uh, while this does not necessarily it plays into the party mechanic but doesn't benefit from it uh it just throws some 1-1 counters around which is going to make it tricky for meat hook massacres to stay on point and things like that so a very useful card for sure in this uh this deck the trap finder is one of the best ones for this deck uh it is a rogue it's a 2-1 but when you've got a full party uh creatures you control gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you draw a card now what this allows us to do is rebuild very quickly so well-timed trap finder uh, just ensures that even if your opponent, as long as you can get one attack in, even if your opponent sweeps afterwards, you've probably rebuilt at least a handful of cards that you can start to, to kind of push back on the, uh, the, the opponent after that sweeper. Uh, the Tajuru, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Paragon, uh, counts as basically anything, uh, which is really nice. And then if you kick it, uh, it was if it was kicked, reveal the top six cards of your deck, and you can put a card that shares a creature type with it from among them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So what this allows you to do is, again, kind of help rebuild and f just push forward with more and more creatures. Uh, it's not anywhere near as good, in my opinion, as the Trap Finder, because you can get a lot more cards off the Trap Finder, but this does help you commit more uh, into your hand, which is obviously important. Linvala is one of the biggest protection spells in this, uh, this deck. It is a wizard, obviously, so it does help there. 3-3 three, three flyer. But you can sacrifice Limvala and creatures gain hex or choose hexproof or indestructible, and creatures you control gain that ability until the end of the turn. Crucially, it's not just one of your creatures, it's all of your creatures. Uh, and so, in response to a, a kill spell, in response to a sweeper, you can actually protect your board, uh, which is really, really helpful. And that's why we play the full four, despite Limvala being a uh, legendary creature. Uh, so, a really interesting card for the deck and very crucial. Squad Commander is going to come down, immediately put hopefully uh, four 1-1 white core creatures onto the battlefield. Uh, we obviously can play this for less value, but it is obviously at its best there. And then if you have the full party and you're attacking creatures you control, uh, or excuse me, at the beginning of your combat, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and indestructible until the end of the turn, which again is just hugely important. Uh, for some tech pieces, we do have Fading Hope and Journey to Oblivion. Journey obviously benefits from the party mechanic, which is why I kind of put it in here as a thematic approach to the deck. Uh, there's probably better options to be honest, but it is pretty nice. Uh, and then Spoils of Adventure is a nice little instant speed way to gain some life and draw some cards that does get cheaper throughout the game. So uh, we'll hopefully be able to kind of take advantage of that. Uh, this is very quickly thrown together, a new version of this list, so I'm just throwing this out there. I know a lot of this is going to rotate out. I also know that this may not work very well, but we're just going to have some fun today, guys. We're not going to worry about it too much. We're just going to enjoy it. I hope you guys had a happy fourth, by the way. I hope you enjoyed the podcast episode yesterday. Let's jump into some games with Band Party. 
All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Now, this isn't necessarily a phenomenal hand. However, double Aspirant with double Limbala isn't actually that bad. Again, keeping in mind, we can only play one of these at a time. I'm going to try this. Uh, we have an overabundance of two drops in the deck, so it's relatively easy to get to a point where we can still commit a good amount of things to the board here. So even with just starting two mana, uh, I think we can, we can make something work here. That's actually a great card for later on as well. Let's see if we can actually get somewhere with uh, with what we are up against here. I'm very curious, actually. Okay, looks like Naya runes or Selesnia runes, perhaps. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Luminarch Aspirant. We'll get a counter on it. Uh, fully expect that they will have some kind of rune uh, to attach to this. This is just such an annoying deck to be against, but it's fine. <coughs> Circle of Confinement, okay. Fair enough. So they're gonna go ahead and take care of the uh, the aspirant there. Definitely annoying, but not the end of the world. Land is good. Land is very good. Um, let's go for the blue here. We definitely want that over um, the green. We really don't have a lot of green in the deck. Uh, it's really just for that two drop creature. So not really, you know, super worried about getting multiple green sources on the field. <coughs> Interesting, okay. All right, not great. Uh, they are definitely gonna be pushing through quite a bit of damage this turn, if I had to assume. Um, we'll see what they, I, are they gonna throw it here or here is the question. Okay. An 8-8. Eight, eight. Yep, oh my goodness. Okay, overly aggressive hand for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, hey, that's very good. I can't be too upset by that. Um, I mean, we just kind of have to block, unfortunately. <clears throat> the good news, bad news here, they are out of cards really in hand, so there's something to it, but it's not great, obviously, for us regardless. Let's go ahead and just throw the two things out here. The only reason I'm throwing two out is really just for blockers, because we kind of need it. I don't think we're going to be able to salvage this game, truthfully. Uh, I just don't think there's going to be a way we can do it. They're going to be able to pump up their stuff again pretty heavily, uh, and we will be in a pretty rough place, to say the least. Um, I think we just block here and take seven. I'm not sure about that, to be honest, but uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. They are at 40. <laughs> yeah, there's very little I think we're going to be able to do here. Um, we can do this, which will give us a couple of little 1-1s. One uh, and I mean, that's actually fairly relevant. Um, and I think we just pass here. Um, they are going to get these two Reign of Truths flipped, which is not ideal. Um, so they do have a couple of extra creatures, but they did brick on the draw, which is relevant. Uh, let's see how they attack. If at all, they may not. That's worth noting. Um... Okay, so they are gonna attack. I will, I think, just block like this. I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm still gonna keep as much on the board as I can, I think, at this point, so that seems relatively important. Uh, let's throw Limvala down. Let's throw the Aspirant down. Uh, okay. I will just throw this here, because we now do have two Clerics on the field. So this is actually, I think, relatively important for us let's pass the turn um it's gonna take a lot for us to dig out of this guys i don't think it's gonna be uh super easy for us here but we will obviously do the best we can we're gonna have to just block everything i assume they're gonna attack with basically everything um these are just so powerful it's very difficult to deal with all that okay all right um what we can do is sacrifice this to give indestructible to our stuff, which is not necessarily a bad idea. Um, okay. Uh, we will pass first. I think we definitely need to set the blocks first. Hmm. So if we do this, let's make sure we're in full control mode. Um, let's make sure we're doing this appropriately. Okay, we'll activate the ability. 
which still does block. Uh, let's give indestructible. I think we live another turn. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that did not kill. Oh, duh, of course. Um, that was kind of silly. All right, um, now what? Let's see, warrior, cleric, wizard. That's not gonna be enough. I'm gonna ins or, uh, main phase do this as much as I don't love to. Oh my gosh. All right, well, unfortunately, that is definitely gonna be game here. I'm gonna go ahead and concede. We got through that attack step, but there was no way we were gonna manage that game, unfortunately, which is okay. Again, we're not expecting a whole lot out of this deck. I think this is just for fun. Uh, so let's move into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And actually, I really like this hand. Um, the question is, I guess, what do we play on turn one? And I think it actually depends, since we're on the draw, we'll actually be able to see if we get a, an untapped land, we'll probably go planes into Archpriest. I had to guess. Okay. That is an untapped land. Um, so yeah, I think we actually go this route. Uh, while this does mean the Paragon is gonna be coming down late, uh, and in fact, quite late, um, we are able to kind of build up this Archpriest a little bit. Looks like a potential Blood on the Snow Golgari list, uh, which is probably less than ideal, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna throw this out and we are gonna attack in. Um, they're gonna go ahead and take the two. Interesting that they took that. Um, little surprised. Normally you see them blocking with the eye twitch because obviously they kind of want it to die. <laughs> Um, but it looks like this is a Pestilent Cauldron deck. Cauldron deck. Wow. Uh, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Um, let's see. I think we'll just go this route and just kind of output as much damage as we can. Uh, I'm going to throw it here so we can get a, the attack in with both of these. Uh, actually, hmm. I guess we'll just attack here because they can actually do this and discard a card to create a 1-1. One -one. So we do need to be a little careful of that. We do have double cleric though at this point, so I'm not super worried about it. Yep, definitely going to be blood on the snow deck. All right. Well... Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm assuming environmental science is here just to guarantee an extra snow land. Uh, no, pest summoning, okay. No, uh, interesting. This is gonna be a very interesting deck if I had to assume. Um, all right, they're just gonna throw the pest summoning out there which gives them extra, okay, cool. Would love a land. Uh, land would be pretty sick right now. Um, I think I just go the Limvala route and go ahead and kind of force the issue here. And I, I don't know if we just pass. Part of me really wants to pass, part of me doesn't because I assume they're gonna have like meat hooks and whatnot. Um, but I think, I mean, they can obviously create an extra token here at some point. So I'm not super into the idea of just losing out to all these. So I'm gonna spread these out a little bit and just pass. Um, and we'll see what they do. I assume they're just going to discard a card to create a 1-1. One -one. Yep. Kind of surprised they threw another cauldron out, um, but that's fine. So they've got two cards left in hand. They're drawing a card this turn. Presuming one of them might be a land. Um, that still leaves them with only two cards. Uh, interesting. Sorry. They, uh, they definitely... Okay. Skeletal swarming. Sure. Uh, definitely an annoying card, but not really the end of the world. It's also their entire turn. We do have answers for this as well, which is also worth noting. Um, if we draw an untapped land, we can squad commander for the max value and like start to really go crazy. Um, cool. Awesome. Okay, well, that was not what we wanted. Um, but we do still get to go this route so let's go ahead and throw this down we do have a fading hope as well which is important um okay 
We're going to say this can't attack or block. We're going to throw a counter here. Um, and there's some very good reasons as to why we're doing it this way. Okay. Do we just want to attack here or here as well? I think both of these. Um, oh, they're just going to take it. That's kind of uh, gutsy. All right, six. So we're going to draw two cards here. Another squad commander. Give me a land. Oh my gosh, all the squad commanders. Okay, well, we're just going to leave up the fading hope then. Uh, we don't really have a better option anyway, so this is pretty much a, a straightforward play here. Uh, again, a fascinating deck that they've got. Okay. This is actually fine because this just means they can't, they don't have anything in their hand, right? Like, they don't have a lot that they can do. Um, even with this, I guess they can start milling cards equal to the amount of life they've gained, which is fine. They can also just exile cards to draw cards. They've got, they've got some options here, but I don't think they're great. Okay. Maybe it's not Blood on the Snow. I don't know why else they'd be throwing the uh, Snowlands in, though, to be honest. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to Fading Hope this. I'm going to throw that on the bottom. We want to land for sure. Okay. Cool. That's fine. And there's the land. That's what we wanted. Awesome. So let's go ahead and squad commander. Sick. Uh, okay. We'll say, I suppose this can't attack or block, right? That seems fine. Go there. And now everything is indestructible and really big. So we just attack for a lot. <laughs> Uh, so this is the huge upside to the party mechanic, obviously, is that you can start to do quite a bit very, very quickly, actually, <laughs> uh, once you've got the snowball effect going. So there is a lot of benefit to this, um, and they do gain some life here, but they really don't have anything else going on. So I'm pretty happy with this. We'll just end the turn here. And again, the nice thing about having something like Limbala is that, well, and we, we win, the indestructibility or hexproof at instant speed is huge for us. So that was really good. That was fantastic. We did it. Let's move into game three. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Probably gonna be our final game, if I had to assume. Um, I'm gonna mulligan this. I don't love that hand. This actually like quite a lot more. Uh, so I will keep this. Uh, yeah. I think, unfortunately, it's just that. Um, as much as I don't want to throw that back, because that's such a good refill card, we kind of just want to have the action in the early turns, and so I'd rather keep these and be able to, to really get somewhere. Um, and we'll see what the opponent's up to. Looks like going to be potentially an uphill battle, but we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and throw the Aspirant down. I think this is the better turn, turn two option right away. Uh, the Nimble Trap Finder is much better, even in the late turns of the game, where it's your last you know, piece of the party. So you can drop this down, get in for a big attack, and hopefully do quite a bit. They're gonna go ahead and Vanishing Verse, sure. Annoying, not the end of the world. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this down. We're gonna keep it going. They probably will have an answer to this, but I do think we just have to keep pressure on the board. So if they do decide that, you know, they don't have much to do, we can just kind of get them. Uh, this actually works out quite well for us because we can Journey to Oblivion. Go ahead and get that off the field and then just get in an attack for two. Well, that's not a huge play by any means. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie is a card that we can't outpace. There's just no way in the world we're going to be able to deal with that as easily as anything else. So I'd much rather take the opportunity to go ahead and get that out of there now. Um, so we can Squad Commander. Alternatively, we can just Luminarch Aspirant and also Nimble Trap Finder. Uh, and we can actually play the system a little bit here. So what we're going to do is throw it here we're gonna attack in they just took it fascinating um yeah then i'm gonna just play a second one we're just gonna run the hand out here they are obviously running vanishing burst so we know they've got point and shoot removal I'm very interested to see what kind of sweeper opportunities they might have but given they're playing angels i don't know that those are going to be super relevant um we'll see We'll see. Uh, I have seen quite a number of the creature decks lately running some sweepers just as backup options, so I'm not going to be super surprised, but uh, I do think it's worth 
just kind of throwing everything out as, as we can here. Sure. Linvala is very interesting. Um, I mean, Linvala is very good. I think we go Linvala. I'm not like 100% on this, to be honest. Um, but I do really like this play. I'm going to throw these two. And I will actually attack in. Um, they're just going to take the six. Fascinating. Okay, uh, so what we're basically giving ourselves the highest upside on this upcoming turn if they don't deal with something on our board. Um, okay, uh, that's actually fine. I don't really care about that at all. Uh, so this actually should work out in our favor unless they have a backup play here, which it looks like they might not. Um, they do have to be conscious of the fact that, yeah, we've got the full party next turn. Guys, we did it. That's two wins. Uh, honestly, two more than I thought. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So again, I know uh, this video might be a little bit triggering for some people solely because the, the party mechanic is going to be rotating out of standard very soon. Again, I'm aware of that. I just I wanted to give it another shot. It was one of those decks that when I played it the first time, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, and while this is obviously a very small subset of games and you can't expect to get the same result if you run three games or if you run 20 games, you're going to get different results, of course. Um, but I, I did just kind of want to give it another shot because the, the party mechanics seem to be better than I expected it to be. And while I don't think it's good or super reliable, I do think you can build around it relatively well. And there's some really nice little pieces like Limvala that I think make the deck semi-playable. Um, now, again, this is small subsets, so keep in mind you might not get the same, you know, results and that kind of thing, but I still really enjoyed it, and I wanted to give it another shot, and I'm really glad we did. It was a very fun deck. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed uh, hanging out with me and taking a look at a deck that we haven't seen for quite a while, at least I haven't seen, uh, and hopefully you guys, you know, like the video. If you did, leave a like on the video. That'd be really awesome. Go ahead and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. Also, we did hit 7,000 subs yesterday. Uh, which is a huge milestone. So thank you guys very, very much. That's really amazing. Uh, I can't believe that, actually. Uh, but it's really awesome. So thank you guys so much. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you again very soon.